I didn't realize. The weight that I carry, I think it was just this couple of weeks when people come up to me and ask me, are you okay? And I'm so afraid. I'm breaking apart after the trial. I don't know if I can go through it again. be ready for that. I was born behind my back. It was hard because it was very violent. When the sun go down, we weren't supposed to go out or allowed to go out. So during the daytime, I definitely try to um, take advantage of it. To just run around. And I love to plant things. I used to go steal my neighbor's flowers and the seed in it so I can plant it. To me, it was the best moment of my life. I didn't expect much. I think I had to grow up really quick, that I didn't know how to be a child. My mom had 13 kids, and I don't know half of them, as far as I know, with my mom, which is her last husband, they have six ki kids together, but one passed away, and I don't know what, what happened to the other one, but there's four of us now. My sister, we live together at AIM, but my youngest brothers, we got separated when they were baby. Was there a point where something happened? Hmm. Yeah, it all happened so quick. I remember when it began. 
there's a fire. We were sleeping, taking a nap with my baby brothers. The fire was behind our house and the stuff that we have, you know, for us, we were so poor and we, are, we were already struggle. When it happened, we just had to leave it all behind. You know, there's no picture of us when we were baby or when I was kid. My mom was able to save one. To just stand across the field and watch everything that we have and my flowers and the land that I used to play at, it was just all burned. From that on, we barely survive. We live in a tent and, you know, we do whatever we could to, to survive. Now that I'm actually here, I have that fear of what if. What if I can and what if it's too hard and what if I'm just not able to. Being in the same place that traumatized me in the first place, I'm in it again. You can still see the poverty that existed, but it was also cool to see the so many tall buildings and a uh, fancy store, which is really cool, and Starbucks. I love that. <laughs> that was seven years of not being in Cambodia and went back, so it was a really drastic change. I was such a good girl and I was a mama's girl. She had a way of I don't know, you can say wrap people around her finger. I truly believe that she cared and that she sacrificed for my life. It was such a fool that I believe that. Rex Mai. It's a Cambodian girl that was sold by her mother at the age of nine. Her mother sold her to a trafficker who sold her to an American pedophile. She was with him week after week after week, suffering trauma at a depth we can't imagine. They told us it was the worst case of child abuse they had ever seen. How old do you want? Like under 10 or older than 10? Older than 10. Yeah. If I uh, have the girl, what do you want? So I like the uh, don't go. I want to uh, confirm with how old do you want? Mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, how old? What's possible? Uh, 14?
was a bunch of cops. I don't even remember how many. I was really scared because I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if they were that we were we committed crime. To us, we were in danger, not able to trust. They were separating me from my mom, who I know, who I thought it was my protector. She was in prison for almost a year. I have to testify. You testified to help your mom get out in Cambodia there? Yes. I replay that all the time in my head. We were told that the police is not going to protect us, like we were going to be arrested and put in jail. Mm -hmm. And that was just so confusing. Mm -hmm. Who's who's protecting me? Like what yeah. what's what's going to happen with me? When we started the SWAT team, we needed to make sure that they were really victim-centered rescues. Mm -hmm. And when we do a raid, there are social workers who are actually rescue victims, mm -hmm. right, that have gone through the program and then went to school to become a social worker. So when they come in, they're not just trained on how to handle someone that's in a traumatic situation. They've been through it themselves. And that's made all the difference in the world to go back and help and rescue girls and to be the one that say, hey, come into our arm and you're safe. Yeah. Yeah. Like, everything's going to be fine. You're not in trouble. It's not your fault. To be able to, to have that, I think for me as a child, I think it would help tremendously. For the longest time, I thought I did something wrong. I felt so ashamed and I couldn't accept who I am. And, you know, the truth is the worst and the good define who I am and who I will become in the future. So I could have been bitter about what happened. I could have blamed so many things on people, on God, but, you know, I chose to use those to make a difference and keep going. She was asked to testify here in California against the pedophile who had been torturing her. 11 years old in a foreign courtroom with the man who had abused her 15 feet away smiling at her. Looking at a man that made you feel so worthless and to have to tell and describe everything that happened and then somebody questioning if it was the truth. It was horrifying, it was upsetting, it was Humiliating. In over an hour of testimony, it ended up in this man being convicted and sentenced to 220 years in prison. What amazing courage.
You came and changed my whole perspective of men. But I did not like you guys at first. I mean, I grew to like you. Well, that's very nice. <laughs> I've, I've always appreciated that. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be able to describe why I was so mean to him then, but now I'm like, wow. Like, well, I get it. The first time I met Don, I was so afraid of him because he was an American. But he wanted nothing in return from me. He wanted me to know how much I am worth, and that I'm not a victim. He always said that we are heroes. The photo you see there is the day the Rex Meyer was brought to our aftercare home. and a healing process began. When I went to the restoration home for the first time, the word that I would describe it was heaven. I felt safe there. It was a home, it was, oh, it was beautiful. The waterfall and the rock and, and the nature, so many trees, mango tree, and there's a pool. It was like I was in a dream. And then walking into our room, ไอ้บ้านโกนกําหนดจ้าให้ให้ลูกเธอไอ้บ้านโกนกําหนดจ้าให้ <laughs> 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 ทำปรังกับจางจุดประสาก็แต่กับทำปรังเธอ
Đấy Mình dừng đi Quạt Quạt ạc khám bằng riêng thế Cứ Quạt cực rô xác Quạt chẳng thật tiệt Nên chỉ cả mùi đà Quạt cực Quạt chìa Mình Mình nhảy dụng Bánh tay cầm mặt chạy I think it was frustrated for both of us because she's like, can you tell me how you feel? And I'm like, I can't, like, I don't know. I can't describe it. And I just, it was just hard, hard to breathe. You know, I can't explain how I feel. Having a safe place to just fall apart is very important for me because I don't want to seem weak in front of people. And it was just, it was that moment that I can just, just, you know, I could, I, I would sit and cry for 40 minutes. And I, that just, for me, that was like, okay, that was good. Thang ở sẽ có một cái kia ở cái máu Ở cái tiện tô chúng mình nhóm hoài nhóm tiện tô ta khai Nhưng cái xưa ta ta bảo anh ai bảo cô không bây nhưng ta xưa xa kì với nhỏ Ồ Nói ngay cái xưa nhóm á Nhưng ta ở thì đã khát cứ nhóm bọn ơi Mình chẳng phí nhẹ nên ta xưa xa với nhỉ Chẳng nhóm bảo tôi khai sẽ có một cái thang nhóm ở nâng to xù Làm bây chùi của mình She wasn't just a counselor. She showed me what I'm capable of. And she was protecting me from the truth. She knew what the truth would do to me. She was reintegrated to a family here in California. And she was supported to graduate from high school graduate from cosmetology school, get a California license to be a beautician. As life went on, she got to experience a different kind of love, romance. She met a great guy, they <laughs> fell in love and were married. to have somebody that loved me and to be able to just accept that because it was so new. She decided that she had a creativity that wasn't being used as a beautician. So she chose to quit and start her own business. And she started a business making and designing jewelry and she's wearing one of her creations right there. And you may wonder, why isn't she here telling that story? Well, the reason is she closed that company. And two weeks ago, she and her husband moved to Cambodia. Today, she's in Swipak in our employment center, teaching other girls how to make and design jewelry, giving them freedom that they never had. Hello, my idol. I'm my My In my family, there's no one that actually have a, like a real wedding, and um, I was able to 
you know, have a ceremony in America for my host family that is in America and Sam's family for them to be a part of. And this is just something that I wanted to do for my birth family. It's his first time meeting my family. And for me, it was a lot of emotion. I honestly don't know if I was happy or if I was more anxious. Every time we see each other, I am trying to do the best I can. I just don't understand how could she ever do that. She was so twisted. From my memory, she was always in our neighbor's house playing card game. But somehow, we never have enough money. I don't know how I do it, because I want to run away from her. I want it. I want my peace so bad, but somehow I felt like I need to be in her life. Oh, <laughs> To see the way my mom think that we owe her something, it was hard to, to love her. At eight years old, I don't have to take care of the household. I don't have to take all of those weight by myself, and I surely didn't have to put in a position where I would be exploited or abused, and yet somehow she had the audacity to tell me that she sacrificed for me when all my whole life is, as I could remember, I was the one that doing the sacrifice. I was the one that putting myself in harm's way for my family. I think in that moment I was, I lost it and told her the truth that sadly I was the parent in this household. My mom never told me to be selfless. My mom told me to take, take advantage of the people around me. My mom always tell me to serve, to encourage, to educate and empower, to be able to have somebody that tell me, even when you're a child, you can dream how big you want. That's empowering. And I love, I love and I am proud of who I am, and I'm still working on improving, but at least I'm allowed to do that.
ຈັ່ງເຕີ້ເອີ່ມຕັ້ນເອລຊີນັ້ນຕາມໄປຍາຄິດຄລັບດາໄປຈັ່ງເຕີ້ເປໄດ້ເນີ້ຊິມຸ
the full aspect of stopping human trafficking. The only way for it to function and to work, it needs the full foundation. I remember we, my parents put me into school and I was able to attend, I think the most was two weeks because we couldn't afford it anymore. If I had something like this, I would have been able to go to school and be normal. I have decided that I'm going to be a little girl and I'm going <laughs> to register. Oh. Okay. I like bathroom. It's very important to me. Wow. That's nice. Not bad. Okay, so that doesn't make sense. It's just a girl's bathroom, but why is it this? <laughs> but that's a privilege to have a bathroom like this. It's so much better, it's beautiful. There's so much love put into this. I think this is the greatest thing that AIM have accomplished. And they accomplished so many great things, but this is beyond. 1,500 kids. It's too cool, it's too, too good to be true. So, I don't know. There's a computer lab! <gasps> what the heck? Computer lab. Let's lock. Let's lock. Can I steal one of this? Like, I want to take it home. You know what has amazed me? Because you're spirited, right? You have a strong spirit. You yeah. never once got angry with me. I never? I felt like I have. Oh, you have <laughs> many times. That was a joke. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I couldn't decide whether I want to love you guys or I don't. And you were, you were there. And I'm like, I want to be able to, you know, feel like, I could let go and take the walls down. I'm like, I felt so bad now that I think that, like, oh, he doesn't know, no. like, you didn't, I don't think you knew what to do. It was the first time that I actually was able to, like, because I feel safe. Like, I, I was so angry, but I can't express throw my, it. yeah, I can't express it to them because it's not, it's not a safe place. So Don was my safe place to be my punching bag. Wow, I like that. I like this whole thing. I can't hit it. Look, why me again? Why me again? But why? Okay, 
I'm married, I'm, I'm a woman now, and finally I discovered the truth that, that wow, like there was some ugly thing that happened and and you protected me, you never wanted to make me hate my parents. I think that is just amazing. You know how you always tell us about Abraham Lincoln fighting to free slave and he was your hero and and this freedom fighter and then like that's you to me I would tell my children and I realized that yeah I have a dream and that was to be Don and Bridget ខ្ញុំពីដែលអឺខ្ញុំខ្ញុំសរសឡាយដែរពីដែលអឺការលែឡានតលាការនៅសហរដ្ឋអាមេរិកនឹងមកបានទៅជាមួយគាត់តែព
But I get to look back and see this young child. And I get to feel for her. As hard as it was going through the preparation for the trial, it was good for me because I had so much closure. And it's nice because I don't have to be strong. I don't have to say that I'm okay. I, I'm, I can say I'm okay with being this hurt and and allow myself to say it's okay to go through this. You don't have to be strong all the time. ຈົ່ງຄົນຊອບບານກົບຈຸມຮຽນໃຫ້ອົບປະສາກົນ <coughs> 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 អ្វីដែលជោគជ័យអឺសម័យជោគជ័យក៏ម៉ាក់ជោគជ័យដែរអញ្ចឹងអារម្មណ៍ <laughs> ແລະຊິປະນຽງສໍາລັບແມ່ນຈັ່ງຊິປະນຽງລະຫົດເດີ້ໃຫ້ມາສະຫຼັງກົງມາສະຫຼັງກົງຊິນິດ <coughs> <coughs> Hey, mẹ cái chân ai cứ lại thì chim nó đang mòm, nặng đực mòm mình mình sẽ cao khỏi. Hundreds, if not thousands of people arrested around California are not getting a chance to see a judge because of a temporary stop to almost all of court proceedings. Every single case, other than a few exceptional emergencies, will be on hold at least until April. The World Health Organization has officially labeled this a global pandemic. And here's what it looks like right the now. Trial the trial just got postponed because of the coronavirus. 
and we don't know for certain when it's gonna take place and that is very disappointing it's been an, an emotional roller coaster honestly and it was just so hard for me like it felt I feel like I'm losing control of everything that this this just uncertainty um, and high expectation it's very confusing coronavirus headlines throughout the day and many fear that this is only the beginning a lot of people are concerned about how long all of this might last people are talking about july august something like that so it could be right at that period of time I've forgiven him, but I would never put any child at risk. If I have to do everything in my power to keep him locked up, that's what I do because that's the right thing. True freedom is when you get to speak out and inspire somebody else to stand up. You can either use this crazy thing to break you or use it to make you better. It really is about who you want to become. arrived in Cambodia. It's been a long travel. Um, with the COVID-19 and all, but I made it um, fine. And now I'm on my way home and got to drop off some food for the people that are in quarantine. So I am on a mission and yeah. Hopefully, we'll, I'll be able to help during this time. A question that we all should ask, who do we want to become? Then we get to motivate ourselves to start doing something and make some changes. You open up yourself to see the needs in the world. Because when we stop thinking about ourselves, but we start caring more about others, that, that's who I want to be. Live uh, with passionate passionate love for other people around you for a cause live to inspire um, yeah, and live to tell stories